air taxis take a step closer to becoming a daily reality. New regional guidelines have been launched to ease regulatory concerns and speed up commercial operations in the Asia-Pacific region. Air taxis promise to fly you over traffic in minutes. But what are they and what's stopping them from taking flight? The technology is called eVTOL, short for Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing. They are battery-powered aircraft that lift off and touch down like helicopters, but cruise on wings. They also aim to be quieter than helicopters. They're built for short routes. Think airport to the city center, for example. But there are hurdles. Limited airspace means that these aircraft need to fit into existing flight paths to ensure safety. Infrastructure is also another issue as takeoff and landing pads, as well as charging points, are not yet in place. Costs remain high and regulations in this space are also lagging. These roadblocks have not stopped firms from around the world from entering the market. Chinese firm Yihang was the first to receive approval for limited commercial sightseeing flights. In Dubai, Joby Aviation is targeting a 2026 launch, having already completed its first test flight in the city. In the United States, operators are eyeing a high-profile showcase at the Los Angeles Olympics in 2028. In Singapore, there are currently no air taxi services in operation. German firm Velocopter previously announced plans to launch a 15-minute air taxi flight in the Marina Bay area. But it filed for insolvency last year after about five years in operation. It said it could not raise enough funds to continue. Singapore's aviation regulator says it's still early days. So for now, the dream of skipping traffic is still on the runway. For more on how the uh, eVTO e players in Singapore and the region stand to benefit from the guidelines, we are joined by Derek Cheng, Head of Commercial Asia Pacific uh, at Vertical Aerospace. Derek, thanks for joining us this evening. Now, so exciting, right? Air taxis is like something out of Blade Runner or something, you know, sci-fi movies. Um, but first, to regulations, right? The APEC-wide regulations. How would it benefit the industry when it comes to certifying the use of such technology? Well, thank you, Genevieve. In the air mobility market has an immense potential in the Asia-Pacific region and requiring some projected up to 1,000 of aircraft over the next 10 years. In the APAC region, however, it's also highly fragmented. Mm -hmm. And with this, across, it comprises more than 20 other countries. Mm -hmm. And as a result, APAC-wide regulations are useful to set an initial basis of aircraft certification and operating standards to allow for a dialogue between regulators and the industry to discuss safety objectives as well as the safe entry in the service of such mm -hmm. new air taxis into mm -hmm. the market. Mm -hmm. For companies such as Vertical Aerospace, we are a British aircraft manufacturer mm -hmm. and therefore we work with the UK Civil Aviation Authority mm -hmm. and other global aviation regulators on type certification. Mm -hmm. And we're very excited to be part of this dialogue of APAC regulators mm -hmm to bring this to the market here. Mm -hmm. Now, regulation always gives like a peace, a peace of mind, isn't it? But is it enough to guarantee safety and I suppose public trust? Mm -hmm. Safety is uh, paramount in the aviation industry and for vertical aerospace and companies like ours, we are looking to design our aircraft to the highest safety design standards and to that of commercial airliner standards. Mm -hmm. And for this, you know, we are working very closely with the UK Civil Aviation Authority in our flight tests under, with a pilot on board mm. under the permit to fly framework in the UK. Mm -hmm. But to gain public trust, that means giving exposure and experience to people to come and feel and understand what the technology is all about. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to share that just yesterday, mm. we did a ferry flight, uh, airport to airport flight mission mm -hmm. from our flight test center in the UK to an, another airport to bring it to the, one of the largest uh, air shows in the UK mm -hmm. for us to showcase the aircraft to close to a million people. Mm -hmm. And I think from such experiences, this will start to build up momentum mm -hmm. for the industry mm -hmm. and where people can start to understand the technology better mm -hmm. so that we can gear up towards certified deployment. So this just happened yesterday? That's right. Uh, what was the distance covered? We flew a distance of around 17 miles and that's just over 20 plus kilometers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this was with a pilot on board. In EV tall terms, when you have a pilot on board, 
when you are full scale, so you're a 3.5 ton aircraft, mm. this is a monumental feat mm. uh, for an electric aircraft. Yeah. And I think this would only be the starting point for us to prove out what we want to do by the end of this year, which right. is the pilot, piloted transition flights. Okay, well, that, that sounds like a good start. Let's, let's go use that and talk about some common use cases, mm -hmm. right, that the industry is hoping to use eVTOLs. Can you share? You alluded earlier to some, and from our 1,500 aircraft that we have pre-sold in the entire world, mm. one third of them are in APAC. Mm. And for this, our customers are telling us they would like to fly airport transfer missions, mm. sightseeing and tourism, intercity point to point, but we also see potential for public sector use, including yeah. for medical transportation. Mm -hmm. And with this, we believe that uh, the EV tolls will have a place to complement existing aviation mm -hmm. and be able to play its role in the lower altitude skies. Mm -hmm. So uh, users, like it could be like medical, right? Uh, That's right? It could be even disaster relief or cargo and deliveries. Is this all part of uh, use cases? That's right. I think the EV tolls are geared towards specific users, but the primary near-term application will be about passenger transport. Mm. And hence, it is essential that we design an aircraft to that of commercial airliner standards, mm. where we're able to use the aircraft effectively. And in the case closer by to Singapore, we see opportunity as well for cross-border flights. Mm -hmm. And so imagine mm -hmm. uh, skipping that one to two hour uh, congestion on the ground or by sea and being able to arrive at close to your destination in 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. By nature, EV tolls are safer, quieter, and more affordable than conventional helicopters. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think it opens up new opportunities for people to save time and to travel closer to their destinations. Mm -hmm. So it's all the good stuff, right? Let's talk about uh, safeguards against malicious users, for example. Uh, how do you, you know, ensure smuggling and illegal activities like distribution of, you, you know, uh, I suppose drugs or even animals? How, how do you safeguard those? Well, uh, aviation safety uh, is, you know, maintained at the highest standards, as we know. And in the case, take, for example, a cross-border flight. Uh, we would basically use existing customs, immigration and quarantine facilities mm. to enforce the border control mm. to ensure that malicious activity uh, is prevented. But I think taking hands into as an aircraft uh, manufacturer, uh, the key thing here is how do we create a cabin partition that separates the pilot from the passengers mm. against unruly passengers. Mm. And I think in doing so, we safeguard against passenger safety mm. and the wider public uh, trust. Okay. Um, earlier, we, we, we talked about how, poten how potentially big the market is. We're talking about billion, a billion dollar industry. Right. So in, in terms of better attracting investors and market players, what opportunities are ahead? Well, the future is uh, bright for EV tolls and the advanced air mobility sector. Um, we certainly believe that, you know, we would... Um, be able to bring these use cases uh, closer to market. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the APAC uh, region alone, you know, we have already expected for countries in looking at these uh, APAC regulations to develop their own national roadmaps mm. to really set the priority for how they're going to adopt such technology. Mm -hmm. take, for take, for example, countries such as uh, Japan, Korea, and China. Mm -hmm. uh, they are paving the way in terms of their national roadmaps and we believe that uh, these APEC regulations allows all the countries to be able to increase their level of awareness so that we're able to accelerate yeah. commercialization mm -hmm. and the scaling across the multiple markets across the region. Okay. Speaking of acceleration, uh, France, Italy, South Korea are set to be introducing air taxis this year. Dubai, of course, we already know in 2026. So for Singapore, you know, uh, how early would we be able to see that dream? Well, all I can say is that air taxis are close, uh, coming close to the skies near you <laughs> sooner than you know it to be. But I think realistically in 2027 or 2028. In the case of vertical aerospace, uh, we're developing a one pilot, six seater passenger EV tall, mm -hmm. fully battery electric mm. that will fly up to 160 kilometers. Mm. In doing so, um, we believe that we will bring the aircraft to market, whether it's in Singapore or the wider region, in sometime in 2028. Mm. Uh, we are also developing the next family variant, which is a hybrid electric variant, mm -hmm. to be introduced sometime in the 2030s. Okay. And this would introduce new range and payload for the aircraft that will allow us to fly and unlock new missions, including for wider commercial markets of the defence. 
And I would just say that, you know, this is only the start for greater and for sustainable aerospace innovations to come. All right, 2027, 2028, here That's we right. come. Thanks for joining us, Derek. Thank you, thank you. And that was Derek Ching from Vertical Aerospace.